name's Dawn Dickens and I work for the Manx Wildlife Trust. And um, we've been looking at various things you can do um, during this um, period of time. So today I thought it'd be really good to have a little look at these guys, um, which you've probably got plenty of in your garden. And the great thing about these is you don't need a big garden. Even if you've got a little stone wall, you've probably got some of these hiding. You can just see a little snail there, okay. And there we go, just put you back in the pot. Um, so we're going to look at slugs and snails today. We're going to look at the snails first. So the two snails that I've collected, and these were hidden right inside um, some stone walls. There we go. So this is very, very typical common snail around the Alamant. This is a garden snail. And you can see this sort of like banding on the snails, okay? And it's almost like camouflaged. So snails are gastropods. Gastropods means stomach foot, which I think is just a lovely description. Um, very common on the island. We get lots and lots of different sorts of snails. I'm just going to show you some pictures of some. Now you can download this sheet from our website, which is manxwt.org.uk. So here we go. Here's a snail sheet that I've got. Now, the great thing about snails is they're also um, underwater. So here we've got a ram's horn snail, which is if you've got a pond, you might well find some. And these are marine snails. So the ones that live underwater will obviously have gills. The ones that live on land have lungs. And all snails have just one lung. And they breathe through the sides of their bodies, which is just awesome. You can watch them. There's a snail, which I think is absolutely fantastic, that's on the Isle of Man. It's called the hairy snail. Here it is. Okay. Can you see the little hairs on his body? They are just like little bristles. It's quite hard to spot. Um, it's only in one or two places. I know it's on one of our reserves. So snails, absolutely fantastic. Um, they have um, shells, which is a really good thing because that's their protection. So they can curl up inside it. Um, and also it stops their bodies um, drying out. So if we look again at our snail, here he is, he's just clinging on to the top there. You can see that the body of a snail is very, very, very soft and very squishy. And can you see it's just got a little bit of a shine to it, so they're very moist as well. Okay, right. So we have lots of different snails. Snails can be a real pain in your garden. In fact, snails are more likely to be eating your plants than slugs, unfortunately. But everybody really loves snails more than they love slugs. Um, they can live from 5 to 15 years old. So just think about that little snail that's been hiding away in your little crevice in your garden. Could be as much as 15 years old. They lay eggs. And the eggs look like really um, shiny beads. And those hatch out into little mini snails. Now, um, a snail, this isn't a boy or a girl, it's both at the same time. They are hermaphrodites, okay, which means they're boys and girls at the same time. They move around on a massive, big foot. They don't have legs, they have one big foot. Foot. And if you put a snail in a jar, you'll see like the ripples of the muscles working up. They also leave a slime trail behind, a mucus, it's called mucus. And mucus is very like your snot up your nose. It does two things. It helps protect against um, moisture loss so they don't dehydrate. And also it helps them to move over the ground. The other thing is, snails, can you see it's got four tentacles here, two long ones and two short ones. The two long ones are called the optic tentacles, so they've got eyes on. Now their eyes don't see very well, they can't see us in detail, so it's not a good way of sensing about your world. So the smaller tentacles are called sensory tentacles and they taste and they also smell. Now those slime trails that have been left, other snails will follow and they can taste, they can taste whether it's going to be a friend or not. And also we think it's one of the ways that they find of getting back home. He's just stuck himself, there we go, to my finger then. 
If you do handle slugs and snails, please, please do wash your hands really, really well afterwards. Um, they can carry germs and things. And especially slugs carry something called long worms, which isn't very good for dogs. So please keep them well away from your dogs. Um, oh, he's having a good day. He's really beginning to cling on now. And that's, I can feel him actually suckering on. Now there's their mucus that they produce there's two sorts, and one of them has a lot of fibres in it. And those fibres actually help them climb up the vertical surface, because otherwise you'd think, slight, they'd just slip off. So there he goes. What I'm going to do um, is I'm going to get my microscope on, and we'll have a little look. Um, before we do, let's just have a little look at this sheet of paper, which has, it's a label. There you are, can you see yourself in there? Um, so all snails all have a shell and they're right hand curled. If you ever find a left handed one, really, really important, um, let us know because they're really quite rare. And the poor things, they don't have, they can't find mates. Um, there was one called Lefty that they found about three years ago and they never found a mate for it. So there we are, we talked about the tentacles, the optical ones, so that you can see the eyes on the end of it, there's little spots, okay. The sensory ones, they have this long foot, they obviously have a head. Just tucked underneath the shell here is an air hole, a breathing hole. Oh, he's trying to um, put himself around here, okay. Now, when we look at it, when we look at it under the microscope, you'll see that the, that the hole of the snail goes right up inside the shell. These shells grow with the snails and they're very, there he goes, they're very um, constructed in such a way that the calcium makes them really, really thick and then you get this outer layer um, that's a bit more like camouflage. Snails, because they've got the shell, they do need it to have a bit of calcium, so they do actually prefer alkaline soils. So it's a bit of a problem for them. They're a bit stuck as to actually um, where they can live. So I'm just going to get my microscope now and we're going to have a little look and see what we can see. So we're looking at the snail here and you can see the optic tentacle really clearly there. And see the two lower ones here? These are the sensory um, tentacles there and it just touched my finger then and, and retracted back. So you can also see, if you look on the very end of the optic tentacle, you should be able to see the dot there. Did you see it? Which is the actual eyepiece. You can see the skin as well. There you are. There's a dot again. You can see the skin is quite rough. Those little lumps on it are called tubercles. So we just flipped the snail over and here we're looking again at the um, tentacles of it. And you can see the mucus, how strong it is. Can you see as well how the soft body helps it curl right around my finger and there can you see that hole opening and closing that's actually the air hole on the snail so that's it actually breathing in and out we're looking at the snail's mouth and you can see the two flappy bits snails only have an upper jaw because the way they eat is with their tongues their tongues are covered with teeth 14,000 in the case of a garden snail and this is called a radula can you see how flexible that soft body is? And that really helps it cling on to things. And you can just see there the muscles rippling as it's working its way down its body. And then we've got a really good shot at the front of the mouth there. Now we've had a really good look at our snails, okay? I'm gonna tell you a few more little things about them. So when we saw the air hole on the snail, which was on the right hand side, so it'd be on this side, um, oops, sorry, I made it. Did you see that? Did you see then when I accidentally touched the tentacles, the tentacles retracted back in? And it's a really, really good way of them protecting the sensory organs that they have. So if we'd um, had a little bit of more of a look behind the air hole, you would have seen actually its bottom is just behind its air hole. So it's snails, when they poo, the poo actually comes out midway down um, their bodies. If you do pick up a snail, if you can, put it in a jam jar or something. Don't put the lid on, you don't need to, but just look from the other side and you'll see the ripples of the muscles running up and down the foot of the snail. I think he's gonna turn himself over again in a minute. Um, I'm gonna set you a bit of a challenge. Now, if you go onto our website, which is www.manx, 
wt.org.uk. You will find a little activity sheet about capturing and recapturing snails. Because the interesting thing is finding out whether you have the same snails keep coming in your garden, whether they always go back to them in the same places. And it's quite a nice little thing to do. So what, all you need is you need some nail varnish and you can paint a number or a pattern on your snail and then put it back down. And the best time to go looking for snails to sort of capture and do this to is at night time. So take a torch, have a little look, or very, very early in the morning when the day's just breaking at dawn and look for them there. And it's a nice little activity. Make a notebook up, okay? Write down snail number one was living in your wall. Snail number two was living under a plant pot. And then see the next day if they're still there or not. It's a really, really interesting thing to do. So now we're going to look at our slugs. So one of the differences between a slug and a snail, if you're following the slime trail of a slug, then the slime trail will be continuous. If it's the slime trail of a snail, then it tends to be in dashes. So you get little gaps. In between so you know when sometimes you get that mysterious slime trail in your kitchen and it drives you mad what is it if it's continuous then you know you've got a slug in your kitchen if it's got little gaps oh you see just have a little look at my finger then he's just having a little taste with his little sensory um tentacles if it's if it's got those little dashes then you know you've got a snail on board so now we're going to talk about slugs okay so in my pot i've also got of slugs if you can see and um, they are gastropods just like a snail um, they still have those four tentacles so they have the optic tentacles the ones with the eyes on and the sensory tentacles as well um, and I know people don't like slugs but you know ecologically they're so so important they're the food source for a lot of other animals so what, what lives on them? Beetles, ground beetles. Biggest predator of slugs are ground beetles. So if you want to get, slug, get rid of slugs in your garden, get yourself a log pile. Just pile up some old wood, let it rot down. The ground beetles will love it and they'll keep your slugs down in your garden as well. Obviously hedgehogs love slugs and obviously frogs. Another really good way of attracting um, those predators is to have a pond. So if you're a slug, you've got advantages over a snail. You can move a lot quicker because you don't have the weight of that shell on top. You can also squish yourself into tiny, tiny little cracks. This is what they do. They need to do that to stop that evaporation from them. Even though they're covered in mucus, very like a snail, they need to stop that evaporation. And also they can hide from the predators in there as well. So... They can move a lot faster. How quick do they move? Well, probably about 15 yards an hour. It's not very fast, is it? Okay. And snails obviously are going to be a lot, lot slower than that. So we have lots of different sorts of slugs. Now slugs actually have evolved from snails. Snails came first and then there were slugs. So we can get slugs with tiny, what we call residual leftover shells on them. And often they might be on the very end of the foot of the slug or they might be underneath the mantle, that middle bit. So we have four main groups. We have what we call the rounded slugs, which are those big black slugs that you get in your garden with the orange frills around, okay? And we call those the Aryan species, okay? We can get ones now. If you look very carefully, can you see down the back here, there's like a white line. This is a ridge. It's almost like it's been nipped up. So we have what we call the semi-keeled slugs. So that's the ridge is halfway along the body, and the long killed slugs where that ridge goes all the way along. We also have the worm killing slugs, which aren't particularly nice. Some slugs are absolutely fantastic. Now we've got a lovely leaflet for slugs on our website, so please, please do go and have a look. Now my apologies because our print is blown up, but I don't know if you can see the lovely markings on this slug. This slug is called a leopard slug. You want this guy in your garden because this slug will eat other slugs. Just like snails, a slug is both a boy and a girl at the same time, hermaphrodites. Can you remember that word? Okay, 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a little look at these underneath a microscope. So we'll have a little look at the mantle and everything. The other great thing about slugs is they're what we call indicator species because they move so slowly. They tell us a lot about the habitat that they're in. So if you find something called a lemon slug, um, then that's an indicator that the woodland that it's living in is quite ancient. We can also use the ash black, black, black slug sorry, as an indicator for um, ancient woodland. And there's something called the Arctic field slug that also tells us about ancient pastures. So slugs are really quite important, guys. I know they might look a bit yucky, but they are really, really important. So I'm going to get my microscope now and we'll have a little look. So we're looking at here the um, Aryan species. So this is the black slug. And there, did you see the um, optical tentacles really clearly? We're looking down the mantle now and you can see it's got this funny bumpy um, texture and further down the back beyond the mantle you can see there's like ridges running these are called tubicles and these tubicles help us decide what species we're looking at that orange bit around the foot is called the foot fringe and what we're looking at now is the mucus gland can you see it? just all that mucus coming out and if you look very carefully you can see it's actually leaving the slime trail behind so we're looking at the Aryan slug now on its side and can you see it's pulled itself into a rounded shape? It also makes its body go harder. Can you see that sort of milky dot just there at the top of the screen? If you look there, can you see it opening? So that's the air hole working. Now slugs only breathe roughly about one breath per minute so they don't use a lot of oxygen. Now looking at the Iberian three-banded slug, that's the mantle we're just looking at, that lump bit. And now we're going down the main body. Can you see the three stripes? The one on the left edge is really quite faint. And now we're looking down towards the tail. So now we're looking again. Oh, you can see the really clearly the um, eye tentacles there. And can you see the little um, sensory tentacles at the bottom? And see how they're retracting? They can do that with their um, eye tentacles as well. And it's a really good way of protecting themselves. Now we're looking at the mantle and you can see this definite pattern of almost circles on it. And this is one of the ways we have of telling the difference between species of slug. And we're going down that body again with the three bands and down towards the tail. We'll just refocus. There we go. And if you look carefully, oh, can you see the slime trail then? So it's not got a gland on the end of its tail like the Aryan species where the slime's coming out. But look how that soft body is just adapting to go over the ridge. Okay, so I set you a challenge to try and paint the shells of the snails and see um, where they live and when they come back to your garden. Here's another little fun thing to do, okay? So all I've done is I've got my shell itself a sheet of black paper and I've stuck on various twigs, stones, um, dead leaves. And I've used something called PVA glue because that's really, really strong. If you use black, it will show up um, where you painted your slime trail in a minute. So I stuck them on a bit of paper and then you need to let that, that dry. And that's going to take a couple of hours. And then I mixed up some PVA glue with some water. And literally, can you see, I've painted my own slime trail on. Okay. And I went over that twig and around these leaves. Set that to one side, you can see this is still, you can see it running there, this is still wet. So you want to set it to one side, let that dry for another um, couple of hours. And here's a challenge. Challenge your mum or dad to become a slug. Blindfold them, put their finger on the start point of the slime trail and get them to follow the trail with their fingertip. They'll feel it's not so shiny if they go um, either side on the paper. So it's a great fun thing to do.